Welcome to the Barclay Rada Boss Show brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. Kevin O'Rourke alongside the Charleston Southern head basketball coach as CSU takes on High Point on the road, then Longwood on Saturday here at home to cap off a busy opening week of Big South Conference play. CSU 7-6 and six overall, 1-1 one one in the conference, and uh, just a crazy game the other night against oh, Campbell. Wow. You guys find a way to get a win and get to 1-1. One one. That's what you need to do. Before we get started, Happy New Year to all the Buck fans. And uh, I hope your holiday season was great. And ours was busy, wasn't it? Yeah. A lot of travel, Colorado State, and Wofford, and, and then uh, over to Coastal Carolina and, and home with Campbell. It, it's, uh, it's been quite, a, quite a, a busy holiday season for us as far as playing games. But um, off to a one and one start, uh, tough opener at Coastal. Uh, played very well and um, uh, really competed. Uh, one possession game with about a minute and a half to go and we had to foul and, and so the margin was a little different than the game was. Obviously it wasn't an eight or nine point game. And then very fortunate to beat a much improved and, and well coached Campbell team. Uh, very fortunate to win that game and um, we know Campbell's really good and our league is going to find out real soon that Campbell is really good. And um, so we're two, two very hotly contested games but every Big South game is going to be hotly contested. Our league is is uh, deep and talented. 16 more in the conference. You mentioned the travel before Christmas. Wofford, North Carolina State, Colorado State. What did you learn about that your team in that 10-day stretch? Well, it was a really tough stretch. It, it really was to, uh, to play at, at Wofford, pick to win the Southern, at NC State, a top you know, five ACC school, Colorado State, top 25 team, uh, at Coastal. Uh, pick to win our league. It, it was a tough stretch. It had been a tough stretch for any mid-major team in the country. And uh, we, we got better. Our team got better. Uh, we learned a ton uh, about our team. We learned a ton about our personnel. Um, you know, we could have played an easier schedule and possibly had a little bit better record right now, but I don't think we would know as much about our team. All right, we still got some work to do, obviously, you know, by watching us play. And um, the exciting thing about this team is we have a big, um, a lot of room for improvement. We have a big margin that we can improve on. And uh, we got a va uh, some valued uh, seniors that are so good and experienced, but past that, everybody else is new. And so it's taken us a little bit longer than we thought to, to round into shape offensively and defensively. And we'll make some strides defensively, and then we'll, our offense will we'll uh, back up a little bit. So uh, we're just continuing to work. The thing about this team that I really like, really like, is our attitude is terrific, our competitiveness is terrific, and they really want to win. And, and, and as long as you have that as your foundation, you have a chance for success. CSU gave themselves a chance to win on the road at Coastal Carolina on Saturday in the Big South openers. We're moving to some highlights from that game. Bucks taking on a Coastal program that went to the NCAA Tournament a year ago, beat them in double overtime of the quarterfinals of the conference tournament and just another great basketball game between these two teams. Well, it's amazing. Every time we play them, you know, it's, it's, it's come down to a possession. And uh, this game was no different. Uh, Coastal's really good. They got off to a great start. Our press, uh, we had some holes in our press, uh, which hurt us a little bit. Um, and, but we battled right back, got right back in it. And uh, you'll see here on these highlights how skilled and big Coastal Carolina is. Uh, that's a really talented team that shoots the ball really well. And, and of course, we shoot the ball really well at times also. And uh, good execution on a set play there. Uh, the shot is important, but the screening action was so good by our bigs. Uh, good movement in our dribble drive. And Saad Nemley's just been on a tear. Uh, he's really playing well, and obviously that helps us a lot. Wasn't there the last six games of the conference season. Big return to conference play on Saturday. 26 points, 18 in the first half. He got hot, and uh, we know how good a player he is, and the Big South knows how good a player he is when he's going good. You know, he's, he's really one of the better point guards in the country. He's so underrated. He's really not known outside of the Big South, but he should be. He deserves some recognition, and he's been a, a foundational player on, in our program for a long time. Good ball movement. Uh, um, I, I like that we're starting to make shots. We're starting to really get better offensively. And, and um, as far as shot selection, our shot selection has been incredible. Neither side led by more than six in this game. That Nimley three got the Bucks up by six. Josh Cameron hits a couple of tough threes for Coastal Carolina. And they have 
four guards who can score it. Gillis is one of them, and then some size inside. They rebound the ball, they defend. Just a really good team, as you'd expect, defending champion. And when Josh Cameron makes shots like that, it just gives them a whole nother dimension. Uh, there's Cedric with a great follow, uh, follow shot there, and uh, we're tied up at halftime. Exciting game. Tie game at half. Coastal shot over 50% in the first half. Nimley with 18 of the Bucks, 36. Aaron Wheeler going to drive inside here, give it back for Sa, a fifth three of the game, and uh, just good shooting on both sides at times in this game, and just a, a great game throughout. Oh, yeah, highly competitive. You can see Coastal here trying to get the ball inside and make a really nice play. They've got shooters. Everywhere you look, they got shooters, and that's really kind of set them apart a little bit some, from, from maybe some previous Coastal teams in that they can, all their players are really, really skilled. Uh, Cliff's got a good team. Still a one-point game here, one or two possession game the entire second half pretty much. And every time it seemed your team needed a basket, you didn't shoot it terribly well percentage-wise, but you came up with big plays to stay in the game throughout the second half. Yeah, we really did. It really excites me. We're really not shooting the ball well, but we're, we've been in every game with right. the exception of NC State and maybe Colorado State. We've been in every game with a chance to win late in the second half, led at Wofford with three minutes to go. Um, here, this is a one possession game with a minute and a half to go, and you can see the score there. It's, I mean, it's just, it's a really close game. So um, it's exciting for us as, as our offense progresses and as we really relax and, and, and get better offensively, how much better we can be as a team. Nice look there in transition. Danny Upchurch, the freshman, finds Will Saunders, and you figured it was only a marathon before Will was going to make shots, and he's made them these last two games. He really has, and you know it's such a difference for him not being guarded by a 6'9 guy, and uh, he, he's able to be a little bit more comfortable with his release. Something you're not seeing in the highlights here. Bucks out-rebounded Coastal by three, by seven on the offensive glass. Coastal was fifth in the country in rebounding margin coming in. Big shot by Will there. You guys have rebounded the ball really well in past years, but it seems like maybe your best rebounding team in the last few years this year. We sure spend enough time on it. We really work at it hard. And, um, you know, rebounding, we believe, is a, is a big, big deal. And uh, you can see it's a close game here. We're having a foul, four-point game, two-possession game. We come up with a steal. And they'll just scrap it out. Sa comes up with it. If this shot goes, obviously it's a different game. And, Danny's one of those guys that can really shoot the ball that's not shooting the ball well right now. But he, he is a tremendous shooter and his stats, obviously his stats don't, don't lead us to believe that right now. But we know seeing him in practice, how, what a terrific shooter he is. Coastal able to get the win, 83-74. And you kind of mentioned it, but still a work in progress to be right there with a chance to win on the road. You don't want to lose, obviously, but you have to be encouraged by what you see in that game. Well, we're encouraged by two things. We're, we're continually, daily encouraged by the attitude of this team. And I continue to say that because, you know, there, there, we, 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 we've had some teams here that haven't had as much chemistry and as much positive feeling and a willingness to work. This group is really willing to work. And our practices have been really tough, even during games um, or, or the games coming. Uh, sometimes we, you know, we'll lighten up on our practice load, but most of our practices are really tough. And this team has not batted an eye. There's been no negativity. They've really worked and, and, and have a strong desire to get better. And that, that just as we continue to go through the conference season, and hopefully we're one of those teams that will continue to improve. So CSU, a tough loss at Coastal to open Big South Conference play. Bucks came back home, played Campbell, and that was quite a finish. We'll take a look at highlights from that one after this. You're watching the Barkley Radio Ball Show, brought to you by Crew Chevrolet. Welcome back to the Barkley Radio Ball Show. Charleston Southern back in action on Thursday night at High Point. Bucks will take on Longwood this Saturday, 5:30 at the Buck Dome. Make sure to be there as CSU plays their second conference home game of the season. Charleston Southern goes into the high point game at 1-1 one one in league play thanks to a 74-71 win over Campbell as we look at some highlights from that game this past Monday night. CSU going for their sixth straight win in a Big South Conference home opener and Campbell gets out to a quick start early. They sure do. They come out just sizzling and uh, most of it had to do with Campbell. They really shot the ball well and executed their Princeton style offense. Uh, almost to perfection, and um, you know it's tough. I, 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 the Princeton offense—you got to take away something. You got to take away the drives in the back doors, or you got to take away the threes. And um, when they're making threes like that, they're really difficult to guard. Really good drive there by Arlon. Um, good set play. Good execution. 
And uh, it's nice to see Arlon make a few shots. Uh, he's another one that can heat up offensively real quickly that maybe offensively hasn't hadn't had the types of offensive production that he wants to have. Turnovers, we only had eight or nine turnovers for the game, but a couple of them were really costly turnovers. And um, here, Campbell's just really, really has come out ready to play. They were more ready to play than we were. Uh, they were excited about playing. Uh, and you could tell with their body language that they, they really wanted to win this game. They well, Kevin had them very well prepared. Campbell made shots, as you said, here early. They opened 9 of 16 from the floor, hit six of their first nine threes. Troy Harper, a good-looking freshman for them, hits a shot there. They end up going up by 15, but you guys respond here uh, late in the first half. Yeah, we do. And, and um, so there's 29-14. 20, uh, we're, in, we're in a hole. Um, and, then, and then I think the last six or seven minutes, I think they, they maybe scored six or seven points. We, we started moving defensively. We started getting out and pushing the ball a little bit and finding open shooters. A great assist by Sa there. And Will Saunders gets his feet set, I like our chances. Um, just started moving. And, um, you know, a little bit of tough so shot selection there. That's unusual for this team, but good hustle by, by Aaron Wheeler to, to stick that in. Wheeler's put back ends of 15 nothing run. Saunders had three threes during that stretch, ends up going into halftime, tied at 34, and another good stretch here to open the second half. Oh, yeah. We came out and, and, and played extremely well the first five or six minutes, um, active defensively, a good steal by Arlon, and, um, just moving the ball, get a 10-point lead, um, and, and, and just doing an, an outstanding job on both ends of the floor. And then it, it, the tides turned again. You know, we're up 10, and then we turn around and we're down six. So this game had a lot of swings in it, uh, a lot of streaks. It was a very streaky game and uh, really unusual. Uh, uh, type game and very fortunate to win it in the end. Very strange game at times. Saunders hit the three there to open up the, or end the 12-2 run that started the half for CSU. Will tied a career high with six threes in this game. Said with the putback there, you're still up 10. Then Campbell uh, able to put together a 16-0 run here and they just made shots in this game. It's just, un it's, they, they, they certainly have the capability of making shots. Just unusual to see in a college basketball game that many runs right. of significant amounts. Um, you know, you're not talking about a five or six point run. That's a 16-0 run. So not only are they making shots, but we're missing shots. And um, it, 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 it's just, I don't know, the best word I can come up with is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Ryan gets the friendly bounce there. Some interesting shots went in this game as well. Will Saunders with a big three-pointer there. And uh, almost like he fills that Matt Young role. It seems like he hits some of those timely threes just like Matt Young used to do. He really did. And great execution against Campbell's 1-3-1. They, they made a decision to go with that 1-3-1, and, and we executed it. And, the, the, you know, some of the, sometimes they bank them in. They bank in a deep three and put them up six. Our guys battle back. Big three here to cut it to one uh, by Sa. 40, 41 uh, seconds left, so there's a six-second differential. Our philosophy is that we play that out, made a nice play here, good defensive stand, to, uh, and, and Cedric, Cedric makes a nice dunk to put us up one. Again, some, sometimes we can miss those shots and make them make a long, um, a, a long shot from all the way under our goal. Our philosophy is we always make our free throws. That way we cannot lose the game. We can only, they could only tie us with a long shot that would go in. So. Just a lot of coaching decisions there in the last minute and a half, and, and that's stuff that we work on and stuff that we lean on, and we're not making those decisions right there in the huddle. That's stuff that we've already thought about, and, and our team executed pretty well. The three by Nimley to start that run, a couple of good passes. You didn't rush it there. It seemed like you showed some poise and you got a good shot instead of forcing a bad three. That's, again, we're working on in-game situations and talking about not just that, not rushing up a shot. Let's take a few more seconds and get a great look that has a great chance of going in. Rather than missing that, they rebounded and it's probably the end of the game and they have a chance to make it a, a, a six point game again if they would hit two free throws because we would have to foul immediately then. And uh, Sa hit the big shot, cut it to one and now totally changes the strategy. Do you hold, do you foul, do you play man, do you play zone? And just a lot of decisions there to be made and, and this time it worked out for us. You find a way to get the win. Cedric Bowen seems to have a knack for dunks in front of the buzzer. Now back at it, four games in a week, two more. High Point Thursday on the road, defending regular season champion, probably the top player in the league in John Brown. So 
another big challenge. Well, I tell you what, it, it, it's, there's a lot of good players in this league, and John Brown is certainly one of them. He is an elite player. Uh, the thing I like about John is he's a terrific young man also. has a big personality and is really a given high point of a, a marquee player. And uh, much like Kelvin Martin and Sa Nimley and Arlon Harper have been for us, uh, John Brown is just a marquee player. And um, he's, he's a terrific player. So we got our hands full. Uh, we've been two coastal, uh, pick number one in the league, two high point is next, pick number two in the league, so the schedule doesn't get any easier. It's been a very difficult stretch on the road, and um, I just uh, applaud our team for continuing to seek to get better during this tough time and, and um, of, of very tough road games. So uh, we got a tremendous amount of respect for high point, and uh, we're looking forward to having an opportunity to get better. And you get Longwood here Saturday. Hopefully you get some of your students back, get that raucous atmosphere going in here. Yeah, it's, we've really missed our students. We've had a couple games without them. And I walked in after the uh, Campbell game and certainly very glad to win, very thankful for the winning. And uh, we're really excited about it. But it, there, was, there was some stuff missing out there. We're thankful for the fans. We have a large contingent that comes from the community. But without our students here, uh, it's just a different atmosphere. So if you're around, uh, uh, on Saturday. Uh, please come watch us, students. Come be there. We miss you. We're ready for you to get back. I know we have a large number of students that live in the Charleston area, and uh, we would really like for you to come and be at our second home conference game. It's a really important game against Longwood, very well-coached team, and a team that's improving uh, day by day. So it's going to be a big game for us, and uh, we need you out there. We need the buck dome rocking. So two more games this week for CSU. Bucks take on High Point on the road Thursday at 7. Back home, as Coach said, 5.30 tips Saturday against Longwood. For Barclay Radabaugh, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Barclay Radabaugh Show brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet.